everyone. I'm Food for Dogs and today it's Vita time again. I'm wearing my new Vita pin on my black sushi shirt, t-shirt and this is a beautiful enamel pin made by Jessica. Jessica is a Vita fan and she has connected with the Vita community and she's making this these absolutely adorable pins. This one is sparkly pink. Who can resist sparkly pink? I can't. Now if you would like one of these pins um, you can find her under her name Alchemist Candy on Twitter, she's also on Etsy and she's doing a Kickstarter at the moment which is still running I think this uh, the last week now um, so if you wanted to get some special pins that way uh, hop on over to a Kickstarter and have a look for Alchemist Candy um, they really are very very pretty um, I was a bit not quite sure how they would sit um, just on a you know on a shirt I thought they might be too heavy but actually they work perfectly so I'm very happy to recommend them uh, it's another Vita project supporting our Vita community so I think that's great. Um, today I want to have a look at a game called A Whole New World. Whole pun. Um, yes, uh, I won this game in a giveaway on Twitter it was held by the um, publisher East Asia Soft. Um, and as luck would have it, I, I hadn't bought this game. That's why I took part in the giveaway, obviously. And I was lucky enough to win. So uh, that, that's always a pleasant surprise, isn't it? Um, I, that's why I wanted to show you this um, game today. It's a good opportunity to talk about East Asia Soft, what they've done for the Vita community and about their limited editions. Uh, as you can see, I've already opened the game. We did it literally just now, Poodle Pa and I together, just before this video, because I really wanted the soundtrack for the background and I hope you can hear the music. It is actually rather nice, I think. Um, the soundtrack has 24 tracks. It comes with this nice little paper cover over the spine. And I'll show you the back of the box now. And here you can see not only a description of the game and the box contents, but also the typical silver sticker that East Asia Soft uh, put on their limited editions with the, uh, with the number of the individual game. Uh, a nice touch and uh, East Asia Soft I think have uh, perfected the art of having uh, limited editions that all conform to a certain standard so you the customer knows exactly what you're getting. Um, I think they have been uh, pretty successful, which is great. It's a good thing for the Vita community. Um, the, these limited editions are sold via the PlayAsia website. You, most of you, and certainly hardcore Vita fans, will know all that, so I'm probably not telling you anything new. And the good thing is that they are priced very affordably. So they're a great entry point for people wanting to get into collecting for the Vita and not just standard editions, but also something a bit different, a bit more special, like a limited edition. And Play Asia ships the limited editions free of charge 
to anywhere in the world so you don't have to worry about that side of things adding extra cost uh, so the whole package works really well I think I'm, I'm beginning to sound like some uh, like some marketing person that's not my intention I'm just a happy customer and I'm just sharing my collection now I have quite a few of their limited editions but I have by no means bought all of them there's a there's a fair number of them that I have not got uh, for whatever reason I'm probably not the most disciplined collector uh, and also you know we always juggle our budget and yeah that's the way things go um, so back to a whole new world um, I will now show you what else is in the box apart from the soundtrack and you get a very nice numbered certificate with the picture on the reverse. And here we have uh, the game itself. And that I will now have to prize the cellophane off uh, because I believe there is a manual inside. And that is always a popular option to have that as an added extra. Uh, gee. You see why I sometimes like to get this, these coverings off before doing the video because um, it's sometimes it's awkward getting in. Ah, I should have used, look, it actually has one of these little strips you can pull. If I was really smart, I would have used that. So, a whole new world. That's the back side of the game back cover I should say games don't have back sides I have a back side but a game has a back cover and let's see what's inside and here we are obviously the Vita cartridge and a small manual I'll just quickly have a look. It shows you the controls and a bit of information about the game. The sort of thing you would expect to find in the electronic copy of a game. The different stages of the game. The trophies! Oh goodness me! Lots of trophies! Potion Master! Door Guardians Perfect! You are the boss! You are the best! Well, they do sound they do sound very nice. Okay, so small, but that little extra that makes it feel a bit more special you know rather than having nothing in there I always find that so disappointing don't you when you open a Vita case and there's nothing inside except the cartridge I like having something so that's the uh, the newest one or at least for me um, a whole new world and uh, I'll just quickly um, talk through what what else I have uh, you may be wondering why some of them are still in cellophane and some are opened. Um, the reason for that is, uh, I mean, I'm not super fussy, you know, games are there to be played after all, um, whether limited edition or not. But with a lot of these games, I, 
I already have a digital copy, so um, I usually just leave the physical copy wrapped up and it keeps it um, tidy and clean, you know, um, so I don't have to do so much dusting. Um, so uh, there's Conga Master, um, Tachyon Project, uh, I haven't played those yet. I have played Super Destronaut DX, uh, which I have digitally and I have completed it and Platinum did. Uh, so I just left the physical copy just in its wrapper, just like that. Um, it's a very nice uh, little um, retro type arcade game. Not the sort of thing I'm usually into, but uh, many of these arcade games are super tough and I don't cope with that very well. My, my fingers don't, you know, they're not as flexible anymore as they were 40 years ago. Uh, but this game, I actually, it's very well designed. Um, I was able to play it and it, 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 it just worked and I, I was amazed. I was really chuffed. Um, there is Stay, the limited edition, and I have that digitally. So why did I open it? Because it comes, the game comes with a manual. And apparently the puzzles in this game are really fiendish. So I thought I must have the manual because puzzles and me, well, you know, um, I don't really have the patience for really difficult puzzles. So this comes with quite a, quite a thick manual uh, explaining, not giving away the solutions to the puzzles, but giving you hints as to, you know, where you might find the solution, uh, which is great. So for that alone, I reckon it's worth it. Okay, what is uh, sticker? Okay, that will stay. Now the other box, you uh, many of you will recognise that is Reverie, and Reverie has been a big success, I believe. And rightly so, because it's a beautiful little game, a sort of Zelda-type game. Um, and I opened that because, once again, I played it digitally. I actually reviewed it when it came out. Um, and once again, I think I opened it because there's something nice inside. And I can't remember what, but... Um, Look at that, all sorts of goodies. Um, because the developer, they, they are New Zealanders. So it's all about New Zealand, set in New Zealand, this game. And it's got these beautiful little cards with it. And yeah, it's just, um, the developers try and put something a little extra into the box with these East Asia soft games. Um, so the, the basic formula is the game, the soundtrack and a numbered certificate and then if possible they add in a little something like a manual or a little art cards or something like that and I think that just makes them, it's that little extra touch you know. Knit Underground, I'm really keen uh, to play that, that came out in 2012 on the PS3 and Vita and I think it's a bit of a minor classic really so I, I never for some reason I never played it I looked at it for years on the PS3 and never bought it so but now I'm ready I'm ready to go underground with Knit. Um, Devious Dungeon I played the original game the first one um, and I did play the physical version, I didn't bother getting it digitally, uh, and I completed it and really enjoyed it. It's a, it's a great little dungeon game. So obviously I decided to get the second one as well, uh, which I haven't played yet. 
I believe that's bigger, even bigger, more dungeons, bigger dungeons. Uh, and I'm looking forward to that. It's uh, going to be a blast, I reckon. I'm the hero. Again, I have that digitally, which is why it's still in the cover. Uh, a very, very good little brawler with an interesting art style and a good story. Um, really enjoyable. Um, Semi Spheres comes in two editions, blue and orange. And I have my little notes. Um, Semi Spheres is limited to 1,000 copies each. So not a lot. It's a meditative parallel puzzle game. I haven't played it yet. And it has exclusive platinum trophy support on these editions, which I'm not sure you get them on the digital. It's certainly not on the PS4 version. Um, so um, that's, that's kind of neat, and I look forward to that. Um, Ghoul Boy and Fairwind are another set of um, platformers. I've heard very good feedback about Fairwind and somewhat mixed about Ghoul Boy. Um, but again, you don't know until you play it yourself. Pantsu Hunter is a recent one and I'm really looking forward to that because it just sounds so silly and quirky and funny. So a bit of visual novel, a bit of point and click puzzles. Uh, that sounds just great to me, you know, great relaxation. So I, ah, here we have back in 1995, a retro type horror game and you wonder why I've got a rubber band on it? Well, it's to remind me that this is, there's something special about this. And what's so special is that it hasn't got a silver sticker with a certificate number on the back. So I thought, what's wrong with that copy? Did I get something that went wrong in the production process? So I talked with a Vita Island friend and he enlightened me. Um, Joe, if you're watching, hi, and, and thank you for um, discussing it with me. Uh, uh, it sounds like um, most publishers, including East Asia Soft, will produce a certain number of copies that are officially termed sample copies, and they will go out to media um, developers um, for giveaways. You know, uh, they do up to a hundred copies like that. Um, and I was lucky enough to get one of these. Um, so it's just, again, something slightly unusual and I always find that nice. Um, so that's the explanation for that. Um, now, two games I want to draw your attention to. Um, Severed and Mercenary Kings. I rate both games very highly. Severed, of course, I think is really well known. It has been reviewed a lot and reviewed very well. And in fact, I never heard of anyone who played the game and really didn't like it. Um, it's, it has an unusual and beautiful art style and it uses the Vita touchscreen a lot and in quite an unusual way. Um, so this game, believe it or not, has not sold out yet on PlayAsia. Uh, th th that is almost unbelievable, but I think they made, let me consult my notes, Severed um, limited to 3,000 copies. I know there are a few left, there can't be many left, and I did notice that Play Asia is currently having a lunar sale, and I think I saw Severed included in that. 
So if you want to grab a copy at a really good price, I suggest you hop onto it and, you know, do it. It's, it really is well worth having. Now, the issue with this game and Mercenary Kings, um, why didn't they sell out more quickly? We figured, after a lot of discussion, that... The reason, the main reason might be that they were PS Plus games. And that means, of course, a lot of people would have had a digital copy, probably already played the game, so didn't feel like they maybe needed a physical copy. I can, I can totally understand that. But I'm just saying, if you want something a little bit special, um, at a very reasonable price, uh, these two would be near the top of my list. Um, I'll just see if I can pull up um, the screen for, here we are, Mercenary Kings. And this one had only 2,000 copies produced. The Mercenary Kings box includes, with the game, a manual, so similar to what I've shown you before with the other ones, The obviously the um, original soundtrack and a numbered certificate. So again, a nice little collector's item. Um, this one I I know because I, I I checked with the publisher and I know that they literally have only a small handful of copies left of Mercenary Kings. So if if you're at all interested, I would highly suggest you do not delay because they will be gone. It can't be much longer and they'll be all gone. And I don't want to see or hear of disappointment. Okay, so um, that's covered my uh, collection, Cursed Castilla. I don't know exactly what's in the box. It's a bit bigger and a slightly different format um, to the others. So I can't tell you much about that. Um, if there's anything here in, in everything I'm showing you on the table, any of the games, uh, wrapped or unwrapped, doesn't matter, where you would like me to show you, to open up the box and to show you what's inside, just leave a comment, please, below. And... I will do that, and that's a promise. Now, we'll finish off quickly by having a look inside one of my all-time favorite limited editions, and that's So Eats A Lot. It came out in 2018, and it was that year my top pick for limited edition within a certain price bracket, obviously. Uh, so Eats A Lot is a huge favorite of mine. He is such a such a funny jolly character so we've got the art book we obviously have the game and look at that inside is not a manual but i mean this is just unbelievable the art team there um they they've gone to extraordinary lengths lengths um these are I mean, the paper is sort of card thickness, and these are little stickers you can pop out if you want to and use them. And aren't they absolutely adorable? And I can tell you the quality of the print work is extraordinary. It really is. The colors just pop, and it's just a complete delight. Sorry, but here we are. There we are. So, um, we've got that. A beautiful art book with it. 
um, the the um, developers called Behind the Stone. They're in Germany, and the the artist who designed uh, most of what you find in the game is called Naschvogel. And those of you who speak German or understand it will will recognize uh, the name or the word Naschvogel, which I think is a really cute name. So I'll just show you. Um, they've just got, and it's got information with it, you know, which I always find really helpful and and showing you the designs and um, it's just it's a lovely book and I browse through it quite often so um, I'll have a look what else obviously the numbered certificate And the obligatory soundtrack with 25 tracks. There we are. That's the box. There we are. I'll put that here. Sorry. There we are. So that was Sir Eats a Lot one of my all-time favorite editions and as you can see I'm struggling for space so um, that's enough for today any requests please put them in the comments I'll put some more info in the description below um, thank you so much for watching and holding out for such a long time um, I hope you found it interesting. Please keep well. I'm Food for Dogs. Bye-bye.